Hello, God bless you. I hope everyone is having a great day. Today we are going to be looking at Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. A beautiful scripture about our salvation. I pray it will give you some strength and encouragement. The scripture today is similar to Romans 5.10, which we covered about a week ago. We have a link to that video in the description. And getting into our scripture, it says, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. That's good. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. Here in verse 21. The Greek word used for alienated means estranged, cut off, or separated. Before we were reconciled to God, all people were completely estranged from God because of our sin. Reconciliation, reconciliation excuse me, is the act whereby God, through Jesus Christ's atonement, brings us who are at odds with God back into a peaceful, proper relationship with God. To be alienated is to be away from God. The mind is the enemy of God before it is changed into the mind of Christ. We see in Romans 8, 7, that because of the carnal mind, we are an enemy with God. The carnal mind is an, en is an enemy of God because it is of the flesh. All mankind has had a fleshly nature before they came to God. The mind of man is not of, of the, what the Lord Jesus wants. Jesus wants your heart. And when our heart is stayed on God, then our mind will follow. Jesus' substitutionary death on the cross paid the full penalty for our sins, for the sins of all who believe. Reconciliation is, reconciliation is made possible through Jesus' death, which is a divine means of achieving reconciliation to God. Here in verse 22, present yourself holy in his sight or to bring you holy in his presence. This expresses the ultimate purpose of reconciliation. It is to eventually usher the believer made perfectly holy into the heavenly presence of God. Holy, holy refers to the believer's relationship to God. He is separated from his sins and set apart to God by the imputed righteousness because of the believer's union with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection, God considers Christians as holy as his son. We are to be presented to Christ when we meet him as his spotless bride. We are without blemish, without blame, justified by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus made us acceptable before God the Father. When he washed us with his precious blood, it is Jesus who made us acceptable to stand before God as, as the judge of the world. He also opened the way to God the Father for us. And we will be with Jesus when he becomes the judge of the world. Sin affects the physical world that God created. But Jesus Christ's death affects people. It also affects everything that he created. One day the physical world will be free from the effects of sin. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth in the future. And there will be no sin there. God hates sin. God cannot dwell with sin. The result of sin is death. So God sent his son Jesus Christ to this world. Jesus lived a perfect sinless life. Jesus never sinned. Jesus died on the cross for us. And God did not punish us because of our sin. Instead, God punished Jesus Christ for our sins. 
Jesus had made us clean from our sins. Jesus had made us holy. And now God is not angry with us. Now we are not God's enemies. We are not separated from God. God unites his people to himself by Jesus Christ. All this is the good news of the gospel. These verses do not mean that Christ's death has actually saved everyone. The Bible makes it clear that many people refuse to become friends with God, so they are still God's enemies. And in closing today, we want to share the gospel. And we pray that everyone who's listening to this video today, everyone who's listening to my voice, is a friend of God, not an enemy. But I believe if you're listening to this video right now, and you are an enemy, then there's a chance, an opportunity, for you to become a friend of God. All we can do here is just plant a seed or water a seed. God's the one that gives the increase. It's up to you to accept what Jesus did. You know, you may be sitting here and listening, and you may intellectually know who Jesus is. You may know what Jesus did on the cross, but you don't have a personal relationship with him. So when we talk about these intimate moments that we have with God, moments where we thank God for everything that, that we have a warm roof over our head right now, that we have food on our table, that we're getting to see a new day. When you have a relationship with God, you start to see these little things. And you, and you know that it's by God's blessings. But if you don't understand that, then I want to introduce you to Jesus today. I want you to have a personal relationship with I want you to get to know him. I want you to be his friend and not his enemy. So the gospel in nutshell is that because of the fall from Genesis chapter 3, sin entered the world. And sin created a wall that separated all of us from God. This is confirmed in Romans 3.23 that tells us that all of sin involves toward the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, which means because of our sin, not any of us are, no one is worthy of going to heaven. But as we see in John 3.16, God loves you so much that God the Son left heaven, became a flesh and blood human. 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us that Jesus lived a perfect in this life. Jesus became sin for us to pay for our sins. Meaning when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus put on our sins. Put our sins on himself. Like a coat. And when we believe the gospel message, when we become friends of God, then we put on Jesus' righteousness. And that's what makes us holy, unblameable, unreprovable. We put on his... His righteousness when we believe the gospel message. The gospel message is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day, according to scriptures. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you'll be saved. And as we see at the, John, at the end of John 3, 16, Whoever believes in Jesus will have eternal life. John 14, 6 says that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Jesus' blood is the ticket. Jesus' blood is what covered our sin debt, past, present, and future. Jesus' blood is what broke down that wall that separates us from God, that now makes us friends with God and not his enemy. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you sincerely believe and surrender your life to Jesus, meaning you're not just saying words to try to please someone, or get a get out of hell free car, but you really believe in what Jesus did for you in the cross, and you truly want to live for him now, then you'll be saved. This is Jesus' free gift to you, and all you have to do is accept it. Because you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. You can't do enough good deeds. And when you stand before God, it won't matter how much you've given to charity. It won't matter that you think you're a good person, that you never robbed or killed anyone. Our works, our, our deeds are not good enough, good enough to get us into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says it's by grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Which means we can't earn it, we don't deserve it, but God loves us enough that he made a way. And we always follow the gospel, the warning of Jesus' in return, 
because right now you can personally know Jesus, but one day soon and how soon we don't know. But complete hell on earth will come. We can see it coming. The world is getting darker by the minute. The Bible predicts it, and I want you to know Jesus personally before all hell breaks loose. Because right now, before the tribulation begins, we're under the edge of grace, and that right now is the easy way out. To come to Jesus, all you have to do is sincerely believe in what he did on the cross and surrender your life to him. Accept Jesus free, get that free ticket into heaven. But after the tribulation begins, the edge of grace will be over, and that'll be the hard way. And as we say every day, we're not in, we're not in the tribulation yet. The tribulation is casting such a big shadow, though, that we can hardly see a lot around it. I mean, since the calendar turned to January 1st, 2024, it just seems like the world's gone crazier and crazier by the day. That's why we say that the world's getting darker by the minute. But right now, we're not in the tribulation yet. There's no seven-year agreement. There's no one world leader who's trying to bring everything together in his evil agenda. There's no two witnesses preaching on the Temple Mount. They're not offering the daily sacrifices yet. We can still freely get you a coffee at the, at the store, at the, at the coffee shop. You, you can get you a Whopper. You can get you a Big Mac. You can freely get whatever you want at the grocery store. But one day, they'll limit what you can get. If you're good enough, maybe you get a hamburger today. But we're not in that yet. The tribulation is a period of seven years, 2,520 days of complete hell on earth, terrifying supernatural events. Each day gets progressively worse, scarier than your worst nightmare, scarier than the scariest horror movie you've ever been seen. It's a, we don't want you to be there for it, and that's why we're warning you every day. That's why we give you the gospel. That's why we share what's going to happen. We share in those warning videos. We want you to be a friend of God and not an enemy. But when the tribulation begins and the age, the age of grace will be over, it'll be the hard way, and you have to do more than to than just believing in Jesus. At this point, if you're in that tribulation period, you have to die for Jesus. But we love you and want that for you. So right now, before the age of grace is over, please turn to Jesus today. You know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed our next breath. And even if we are here to see some of the hell that's coming, who knows how long we'll be able to survive. You know, many have different opinions on the rapture. We're not here to argue about the time of your reality. It really doesn't matter. We won't be here one day, whether it be our last breath or a trumpet sound. But either way, it's a reality. One day, millions will disappear, along with all the children around the world. And when you hear that all these have vanished, Know that no matter what may be said, because based on what we're seeing, they may use aliens to explain what would happen. But know if you don't see me or hear my voice, that these videos are not uploaded. If all the children around the world are gone along with millions of others, know that Jesus took us home in the rapture. And if you don't know Jesus today, personally, please take the time to get to know him. Why you still have the time today is the day of salvation. Don't put Jesus off. Come to him today. In the description box, we have a link to the ABCs of Salvation and the Sample Prayer. This is just templates of how to be saved and outline of what to say, but the words do not matter. All that matters is a sincere prayer from your heart. Well, I pray you got something out of the video today. If you did, give God glory. Remember not to take my word for it or anybody else's. Read the Bible for yourself. No one on this earth has all the answers you're looking for. Only God does. And you only receive your answers through prayer and by reading the Bible. Don't just take a verse at face value. Read the verses before and after. Finish the chapter. Just picking random verses or just listen to someone read or preach the Bible in a few minutes. You're not going to get the full picture. You can't even scratch the surface of what's in the Bible. So read and discover the stories for yourself. It's so very important to read the Bible for yourself. The Bible will strengthen you and help you to face any trial, tribulation, temptation, and struggle. You know, because we all go through things. And the Bible will give you the strength to, to go to help you through it. You won't feel alone in whatever you're going through. In the description box, we have several sources to read the Bible, along with a beautiful audio book called The Word of Promise, where, like a movie, you hear things like the nails being hit while the gospel, while the Bible is being read. It's a beautiful Listen to it if you get the chance. 
But we have these several sources to help you to read the Bible if you don't have a physical physical Bible, physical book. And if you don't know Jesus today, if you don't believe in him, then tell him you don't believe him. Ask him to prove himself to you. But be open to his answer. And if you need prayer, have a prayer, if you have a prayer request, if you have a praise report, let us know in the comment section. Email us. Send us a message on Discord. We love to pray with you, stand in agreement for whatever your needs may be. Lift them prayers up to the Lord. We'd also love to rejoice with you, Lord, along with you, for what Jesus has done for you. Well, I pray you got something out of the video. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. I love you. Jesus loves you. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Or God willing, we'll see you in the clouds.